in that situation a lot of times what's the next step there? what does that page look like is it diving super deep is it twenty one thousand words how do you typically frame up a page like that when a deal lands and the target lands, we we're real intentional in the pre-drafting process where you're going to run your SEO and you're going to look to see what competitors are ranking higher in search. And we're going to try and find that target word count. Like I think you mentioned before, there's some that are shorter, some that are longer, but what is out in the market that's work? We're real intentional at the start with an outline phase. So we want to make sure when the, the client has sent us an ask about their agreed to the pillar blog. But we like to really outline the piece at the onset and start the collaboration right from the beginning so that when we do get into drafting mode, the client already understands where we're going, <clears throat> what we're doing, and they're like, yes, that's the direction we want to go. Then we look for a particular writer. There's writers that are fit for certain industries, are fit in either technical, non-technical writing. Maybe the messaging or the style that the client has is a little bit, their writing style is more flowery or it's more technical. So we want to get a right fit there. My role as a content strategist, I'm also at that time looking, what are the other additional elements to put in there? You mentioned 21,000 words written on a screen. That can be a lot to consume for somebody and you may somebody lose somebody right away. I'm trying to read all that. So I'm looking for different elements to put into this pillar blog. I go back to my newspaper days when I spent some time on the copy desk at the ledger and I was designing pages at night, six to 10 page sections. And I'm thinking about what images could go into this piece. I think I mentioned before, is there social media posts that will break up this long copy that somebody's scrolling through? Does a client already have a podcast that talks about it? Have Has somebody in the company of thought leader appeared on another podcast or another video that maybe we can grab and put in there as well? At Beacon, we're fortunate enough to have a really good design team. So I'll start to think about my designers and are there graphs, branded graphics? Is there something we could also put into that piece? Is there some type of element? Is there a conversion opportunity? Maybe there's a gated piece that we can put a CTA in there to drive the reader to. This is a crucial part for these pillar blogs is can we get somebody, can we get a person in the company that is an expert about this? We do a lot of research on the agency side. We're trying to find out as much as we can about how it's written, what are the technical aspects to it. But in the end of the day, we aren't in the field living it every day. So we like to get somebody from that company to talk with us, maybe 25, 30 minutes. And it does take me back to the J school days again. Like you want to have as many sources as you can to make it a quality piece. And oftentimes we find somebody in the company that is like, okay, enjoy this process. If you have any other pieces you're writing, I'm willing to get on and talk with you again because they believe in the company, they believe in the subject and we can get them again, ask them some more questions. But yeah, we put all that together and then we start drafting the piece. We're real intentional at the front end. I think if you put the data and you put the effort into research and finding, then when you get into drafting, then it'll move quicker down the road so you can actually get it live, get people reading, get people engaging, get people converting. I think that's a great answer. But I think that being very instructive is that you're creating a source of truth in your case for the client to validate prior to. And when I said 21,000 too, I was tongue in cheek, almost like a trick question because it's, it's some people perceive a pillar as being high level, like uh, the first aisle you might cross over. It's not really getting too deep in anything, but you can also strategically put more effort in unique value in blue ocean components in subject matter experts. So I'm glad the way you described that because you have to strategically decide which sections de deserve more in depth or would add and lead to unique value and differentiation for this specific client. That's what makes your page not just what is beginning, middle, and guess what? That's not going to work if you have any level of, and it's not great for your client as well. So I love that you spend a lot of time to pre-draft, get the validation. Do you still give your writers that brief? Is that part of your process or are you trying to keep them in a box so that you can do a developmental edit, then cultivate that. So where's the control in your process? I typically will provide framework. So I do have some framework, but then the reins are loosened typically in the intros where if they, if, and if the client, it, it does, it is client particular too. Some clients want it written straightforward, like a newspaper article. We'll hit those, what is it? Who, where, what, when, why, how right away and others 
like anecdotes say, let's are, let's lead with some interesting st stats. So I have more of the client knowledge than the writers typically do, but I will structure the piece as it goes down. I'm making motions with my hand going to go down my outline because there's data behind how some of that structure is built. We are still, we're writing for humans, but we're depending on the computer to deliver, to deliver this piece to help us with it. So there are certain elements that are built in. So I, in the brief phase, I do have a section called key points. So it's about four to five. I want to make sure the writer hits those key points, but do give them the freedom to, to write around it as they will. I'm trying to think of other places that are structure. The end is the bottom piece. It's, it's less like this awesome close to some article. And there's going to be a CTA down there. So I will tell the writer, when you get to this point, this is where I want to head. And we'd like to see you circle the whole thing back and then provide the best CTA that we have, whatever page we want to drive it to. So. I guess that's an answer two ways. There is structure, but there is freedom. And the last part, there's the, the client and their style can dictate. And that's where picking the right writer for the pieces does come into fit if they can understand that style. Because, yeah, there's been times where I've crossed out the first thousand words and said, I know the client is not going to like this. We need to try again with the heavy edit. And then there are other times where it's five, six edits, and let's just, we don't need a revision phase. Let's get it to the client because I think that writer hit the note. That's awesome, the way you're describing this, or at least understand the mind of someone who builds narrative stories, journalists, because the things you're saying connect to what an advanced fundamentals of journalism, but also developmental editing and understanding the difference between copy editing and developmental editing. You crossing off a thousand words of that piece might've been the best thing ever for the relationship with your writer. It could have been the worst thing ever, depending on how, how much you, and plus as a little, tongue in cheek, it illustrates that you're a journalist who now focuses on SEO because you also said depends. So how do you measure the performance of a pillar page? It's a tough one. It is a tough one. Just like you said, there are different folks looking at the report and different metrics mean more to them. So we try and circle around with reporting. Can we put some more metrics that might mean something to some of the C-suite, maybe our direct marketing content, that target persona that we're writing this piece for. Initially we're writing for search. So we want this piece to rank higher on search. Can we get to page one? And how do we get on the, and how do we get on the page one? I've tried different avenues to get onto page one, just great copy, a great article that people are searching for and inserting images with metadata on the back of them that have that same keyword. Maybe they land on page one because they're in the image pack. Mm -hmm. I mentioned inserting video, same thing. It's a video topical and have the metadata and that lands in the video pack. We've been intentional about writing for featured snippets or the answer boxes. That's a structure I go back to, but those are all measured. Did, do we rank for the featured snippet or do you, what page do you rank on? We, we do track that because that is that takes a little while. I think everyone this call might know it takes a little while for search and for your target keywords to climb up in search. So we do ask, we beg for patience and some of those numbers. Are there other pages on the topic on the site that are performing better than the pillar? So we're looking at them as well. Is there another link we could add into this pillar that would help generate better metrics that we're looking for? Yeah, I think that's the reporting and the metrics we're looking at is see, can it, Take our client that's asking us to get those target keywords higher up on search and get them discovered more impression. Can that click through rate go up because of so many elements that we're talking to time on time spent on page time spent on their site. We started, but we've always kind of looked at page load speed. This is kind of one that just popped into my head is that I'm adding all of these elements into this pillar blog, but you do want to check your page load speed because if your images are too big, you may be losing readers because it's taking too, it's taking too long to load some of these things. No, I, really, the question was to see how thoughtful of that process you instruct your clients to be. It's not just traffic to that page, right? That's yeah. the key. And that's where a lot of teams fall apart is in the, that it's, it's not just entrance, organic entrances to that page. You mentioned a few things, but I'll distill them. You need to understand, what, are you enabling, is this page then being enabled on search results page features, like feature snippet? images, video, is, what's the influence on, if you, are you doing a gated content asset or content upgrade or other type of conversion? Are users landing here and then wayfinding to other sections of the site? All the content on this topic works together in a blob. 
you already said you have other pages that are woven together. Is that whole blob increasing or is it stagnating? It's not just this page. And has it helped the infrastructure of your sites? Do other pages start to perform better? Just generally, what's your thought process on internal, external links? Also how product and I guess services pages in B2B tech would be part of the play here. I got a couple of strategies for that. Internal links, we try and get two to three internal links within the first 200, 300 words of the piece. We try and do limit the product pages or product mentions in these pieces. I try to be less salesy and more mm -hmm. educational, more informative about the subject. But that doesn't mean that towards the bottom of the piece, you can put some direct CTA to your product web page. There are, and then I go back to the different graphical graphic elements. So say you have a CTA built in a graphic CTA, you could put that in the middle of the piece, say it's a trends report you just put out, or it's a demo of a specific product. But I would lean away from product mentions as much as you can, because we're assuming that the reader there is just trying to do some research, trying to get some questions answered, and we're trying not to sell them as much at that stage. Internal external links, do a fair amount of external links. I would say it's tough to put a number on them because data really works. Statistics really work with the reader. And there's so many shops that are putting out reports and data on the industry you're looking for. So they do become very valuable to reinforce the statements you're trying to make in these pillar pieces. Again, I would probably lean two to three in the first, probably the like 500 words of that one. I think internal are more valuable and we have those a little bit higher up. And I would focus on your links trying to get Put your links when you highlight them, not just like full phrases. We lean towards, I'm going to miss the vocabulary we heard, Jeff, but it's more like the anchor text. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. yeah. So try and highlight those one to two words that are, that pull up in the market news report that say you show these variants in here. Link on those. That, that's awesome. Yeah. I think that it's about how big your cluster is too, or things that you may be able to wayfind towards. You're providing value. You're telling the story of expertise and all the support we got. It's your showcase. It's the showcase yeah. for all your stuff. So you better show all your stuff and put access. There's no limit there. Externals, great point on sources. If you got no externals on your pages, it's weird. You want non-competitive sources. You want non-competitive adjacent references that you don't write about on your site. Don't link to the Wikipedia definition for the word you're trying to rank for. 